had passed somewhere around the mystical land of Nepal Kingdom. Siddhartha Gautama, the Lord Buddha, was born in 623 BC in the famous gardens of Lumbini, at Rupandehi district of Nepal, which soon became a place of pilgrimage. Among the pilgrims was the Indian Emperor Ashoka, who erected one of his commemorative pillars there. The site is now being developed as a Buddhist pilgrimage center, where the archaeological remains associated with the birth of the Lord Buddha form a central feature. The Lord Buddha was born in 623 BC in the sacred area of Lumbini located in the Terai plains of southern Nepal, testified by the inscription on the pillar erected by the Maorian Emperor Asoka in 249 BC. Let's start our today videos about the Lord Siddhartha Gautam Buddha and birthplace of Buddha. Lumbini is one of the holiest places of one of the world's great religions, and its remains contain important evidence about the nature of Buddhist pilgrimage centers from as early as the 3rd century BC. Nepal at the time of the Buddha was very spiritually open. Every major philosophical view was present in society, and people expected spirituality to influence their daily lives in positive ways. At this time of great potential, Siddhartha Gautama, the future Buddha, was born into a royal family in what is now Nepal, close to the border with India. Growing up, the Buddha was exceptionally intelligent and compassionate. Tall, strong, and handsome, the Buddha belonged to the warrior caste. It was predicted that he would become either a great king or a spiritual leader. Since his parents wanted a powerful ruler for their kingdom, they tried to prevent Siddhartha from seeing the unsatisfactory nature of the world. They surrounded him with every kind of pleasure. He was given 500 attractive ladies and every opportunity for sports and excitement. He completely mastered the important combat training, even winning his wife, Yasodhara, in an archery contest. Suddenly, at age 29, he was confronted with impermanence and suffering. On a rare outing from his luxurious palace, he saw someone desperately sick. The next day, he saw a decrepit old man and finally a dead person. He was very upset to realize that old age, sickness and death would come to everyone he loved. Siddhartha had no refuge to offer them. The next morning the prince walked past a meditator who sat in deep absorption. When their eyes met and their minds linked, Siddhartha stopped, mesmerized. In a flash, he realized that the perfection he had been seeking outside must be within the mind itself. Meeting that man gave the future Buddha a first and enticing taste of mind, a true and lasting refuge, which he knew he had to experience himself for the good of all. The Buddha decided he had to leave his royal responsibilities and his family in order to realize full enlightenment. He left the palace secretly and set off alone into the forest. Over the next six years, he met many talented meditation teachers and mastered their techniques. Always he found that they showed him the mind's potential but not the mind itself. Finally, at a place called Bodhgaya, the future Buddha decided to remain in meditation until he knew the mind's true nature and could benefit all beings. After spending six days and nights cutting through mind's most subtle obstacles, he reached enlightenment on the full moon morning of May, a week before he turned 35. At the moment of full realization, all veils of mixed feelings and stiff ideas dissolved and Buddha experienced the all-encompassing here and now. All separation in time and space disappeared. Past, present, and future, near and far, melted into one radiant state of intuitive bliss. He became timeless, all-pervading awareness. Through every cell in his body he knew and was everything. He became Buddha, the awakened one. After his enlightenment, Buddha traveled on foot throughout northern India. He taught constantly for 45 years. People of all castes and professions, from kings to courtesans, were drawn to him. He answered their questions, always pointing towards that which is ultimately real. Throughout his life, Buddha encouraged his students to question his teachings and confirm them through their own experiences. This non-dogmatic attitude still characterizes Buddhism today. The Gautama Buddha then traveled to the Deer Park near Banaras, India, where he gave his first sermon and outlined the basic doctrines of Buddhism. According to Buddhism, there are four noble truths, number one, existence is suffering, number two, this suffering is caused by human craving, number three, there is a cessation of the suffering, which is nirvana, and number four, 
nirvana can be achieved, in this or future lives, though the Eightfold Path of Right Views, Right Resolve, Right Speech, Right Action, Right Livelihood, Right Effort, Right Mindfulness, and Right Concentration. Thank you for watching our video and do like to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon.